Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to talk to you about the topic today. Is Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel? There are people who actually believe that Jesus Christ is an angel. And there are actually millions of people who believe this. There's a whole organization or organizations who believe this, that Jesus Christ is a mere archangel or is on the same level as an archangel. Is Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel? According to the Watchtower Society, JWs, yes, Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel. And in today's study, we're going to take a look at their belief, how they reason that he is Michael the Archangel, and we're going to parallel that with Scripture and see what the Word of God says. Let's go ahead and get into today's study. At JW.org, they state, At times, individuals are known by more than one name. For example, the patriarch Jacob is also known as Israel, and the apostle Peter as Simon. Likewise, notice, likewise, the Bible indicates, the Bible indicates, that Michael is another name for Jesus Christ, before and after his life on earth. Let us consider scriptural reasons for drawing that conclusion. Now, it's interesting how they just assert that because people have more than one name, Jesus Christ also has more than one name. And they also assert that the Bible indicates, Bible indicates that Michael is another name for Jesus Christ. So, to the JW, the Jehovah Witness, so-called, Michael is another name for Jesus Christ. That's according to the Watchtower Society, according to the Jehovah Witnesses' belief. But according to the Word of God, Acts 4.12 states, Neither is there salvation in any other, any other, for there is none other name. That means no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So, to the true born-again Christian, to the one who is rightly dividing the word of God, this statement here, this paragraph here, should throw up red flags. That's what it did unto me when I began to read upon this, to delve into what they believe. This threw up many red flags. I see here the, the, the subtlety, the manipulation in their wording and how they assert things as fact, all to, to, to pump and prime a person up to receive their false teaching. When the red flag that rose up and pointed me and directed me initially was Acts 4.12, the Word of God that states there is no other name, not Michael, not Gabriel, not Abraham, Moses, Noah, no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Must be saved. The angel Gabriel told Mary, You shall conceive, you shall bear a son, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Not Michael. Not archangel. You shall bear an angel. You shall bear an archangel. No. You shall bear a holy thing, a child, a son. You shall call his name Jesus. So right here we already see the first uh, flaws from their first paragraph on who Jesus Christ is, which they believe is Michael the Archangel. If you'd like to know a little bit further on the significance of the name of Jesus Christ, see our video what is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the description box? At their website, they also state, Archangel. God refers to Michael the Archangel. This term means chief angel. Notice that Michael is called the Archangel. We're going to get into this. Once again, they're, they're beginning to assert things that are not fact. But this is how they get you to believe that what they're saying is fact by saying it so blatant and forthright. 
We're going to get into that. This suggests that there is only one such angel. Oh, really? In fact, the term archangel occurs in the Bible only in the singular, never in the plural. Moreover, Jesus is linked with the office, office of archangel regarding the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 states, and this is their Bible translation, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a commanding call, with an archangel's voice. Thus the voice of Jesus is described as being that of an archangel. This scripture therefore suggests that Jesus himself is the archangel Michael. Notice in Jude 9, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Notice, Michael was an archangel. He said, The Lord rebuke thee. In other words, he's in submission to the Lord. He's referring to a superior or to the one who is fully in command and through that power of the one who is fully in command he says to the devil the lord or the one who's fully in command the one who is my superior rebuke thee now jesus christ doesn't need authority to rebuke anyone all power has been given unto him matthew 28:18 so if Michael is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is Michael, why would the Lord Jesus Christ say, the Lord rebuke thee to the devil? When Jesus has been given the keys of life and death, when he has power over everything and anything in heaven and on earth, when the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily, why would Jesus Christ say, the Lord, the Lord, rebuke thee if Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. He does not make this statement. Jesus Christ does not make this statement. Michael makes that statement. Michael, that which is inferior to Jesus Christ or a subordinate, makes this type of statement. So in 1 Thessalonians, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, notice, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice, the definition of with is accompanied by another person or thing. So yes, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, shall himself descend from heaven with, with, with now he is accompanied by another person or thing it doesn't say that jesus christ is the one who is trumpeting the trump of god in other words if i say to my friend i will meet you at the tennis courts i do not need to go home first i have my tennis racket with me that means i have the instrument to play the game of tennis with me alongside me or near my person. It's accompanying me. I have my tennis racket. I am able to play. I do not need to go home first. I have it with me. It's coming with me to the tennis courts. And that is what we see here. The Lord himself comes down from heaven. Accompanied by. Accompanied by another person or thing. He's accompanied by the archangel. Accompanied by the angels of God. And they have the trump of God. And they shall sound the trump of God. And we're going to see that in the scripture ahead of us. So the angels of God make the sound of the trumpet. Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see, notice, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father, coming in the clouds of heaven, notice, with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. He, 
the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Now we understand 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Jesus Christ descends and accompanied with him are his angels that he sends forth with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together, they shall, the angels, shall gather together his, his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So angels are representatives of God. Angels work on behalf of God. Michael is an archangel, and he works on behalf of God, and he is a representative of God. So the angels work on behalf of God, and let's get into this. Genesis 11, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Now this is referring to Nimrod and his tower that he built up to the heavens, and he wanted to essentially dethrone God, full of pride. The Lord came down to see the city, the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, notice, let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them. Notice, let us go down and confound their language, plural. And the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So angels work on behalf of God. The Lord had seen that this was a thing that should not continue, so he goes down, the angels work on behalf of God, and begins to scatter them abroad. Now in my opinion, this could have happened many ways. You know, we're not necessarily told the explicit details on how this happened. But I believe that the angels of the Lord came down, multiple angels, and they, they, they broke off certain sects of the people, portions of the people. And they were able to do this because they spoke in a language, in a particular language, that the people understood. So the angel speaks in a particular language that the people understood, and the rest of the people cannot understand that particular language, so there would be a division. So that angel of the Lord would lead them out to, uh, to be dispersed from that area to different parts of the earth. Likewise, with another angel, he would speak a different language, a particular language, that a certain people, this is miraculous, this is a miraculous understanding of that angel's language. Let's say a hundred or a thousand uh, people would hear that particular angel's language and would begin to follow that angel a different way, and so on and so forth. So we might have a multitude of angels leading a multitude of people into a multitude of directions. That is just my opinion in theory how the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of all the earth. They followed the language that they understood. And the Lord said, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, notice, I will go down, similar to what he said in Genesis 11. The Lord came down. I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, I, me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. Notice, I will come down and see. And the men turned their faces from thence and went to Sodom. Very next chapter, verse 1, And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Notice, two angels. The Lord said, He will go down and see. And the men turned their faces and went toward Sodom. And two angels are literally at Sodom now. They enter the city to behold the evil that is being done, to confirm whether it's so or it's so grievous, and to see if it's worthy of destruction. 
So the angels are representatives and they also work on behalf of God. And we see here that uh, Lot doesn't refuse the angels. He's not skeptical, but as we see in Hebrews 13, the Bible states, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So that is what we see Lot doing. He doesn't reject the angels, but he begins to entreat them and allow them to come into his abode, his tabernacle, his area, and he begins to entertain them, offer them meal, offer them lodging, and they accept it. And you can read on further what happens to those uh, in the city who try to come against the angels. So we are beginning to see that Michael is not Jesus and Jesus is not Michael. And we're going to confirm this with Scripture. Notice Hebrews 1, 4 states, referring to Jesus Christ, being made so much better than the angels. Made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance, inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus Christ is better than the angels and he has obtained a more excellent name than the angels. So how can Jesus Christ be Michael? Revelation 12 states, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So you see here Michael is doing battle against the dragon and the dragon's angels. Second Thessalonians 1, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Notice, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So it's the Lord Jesus that shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And the JWs like to use these two scriptures to bring about their false teaching that Jesus Christ is Michael. Because Revelation 12, 7 states Michael and his angels. Second Thessalonians states Lord Jesus with his mighty angels. So they state or assert that if Michael has angels and Jesus has angels, well, Michael and Jesus must be the same being. <laughs> Pardon me. I had a little bit of a laughter, a chuckle there, because this is a stretch. And this little stretch that they have compiled together here is going to be dismantled by the next verse that we read. Daniel 10, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days, 21 days, but lo, Michael, notice, one of, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So we see here in Daniel 10, 13, the dismantling of their false doctrine that Jesus Christ is Michael the archangel. How do we see that? Well, we see it because it states that Michael is one of the chief princes. And if he's one of something, that means he is not the epitome of that something. He is one of the chief princes. Now there are chief princes, and he's one of them. He's not fully above them because he's one of them. He's on par with them. So the chief princes are under Jesus Christ. And how do we know this? Because Hebrews 1.4 states, being made so much better than the angels, he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. We know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. All power has been given unto him. Now if all power has been given unto him, and he is King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ cannot be one of the chief princes because being one of something means that he is not superior than that something. He's on par or he's on the same level of that something. Jesus Christ is not Michael. Michael is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. 
Thou art my son, this day I have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Did God say that to Michael? Did he say that to Gabriel? Of course not. There's only one that he said that unto, and that was the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. He is a son unto God, not Michael. Not any other mighty angel, not a chief prince, not an archangel. No. So in conclusion, we can thus say Michael is an archangel and one of the chief princes. Jesus Christ is the almighty God manifest in the flesh. The JWs, the Jehovah Witnesses, as they call themselves, and they're not truly Jehovah Witnesses. They believe in a different Jesus Christ. Now they may appear very subtle and calm and personable on their street corners, sitting upon their little fold-out chairs behind their little track booths, and they may be very welcoming with their nice attire and their women who wear dresses and their men who wear suits and ties. But understand one thing, my friend, brethren, that the devil doesn't come in a red outfit with a pitchfork and a tail and horns. But as he was in the beginning, the most cunning, crafty beast of the field, the most subtle beast of the field, as it says in Genesis, he is the same today. Very cunning, very crafty, and he knows better than to come in a very blatant way that will throw people off. But he's the angel of light. And he has masked himself in this organization called the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah Witnesses, who sit behind their little booths very calmly waiting for someone to take at the bait, to be ensnared. And once they give them attention and to believe their false doctrine, then they're hooked. They will perish. They will go to hell along with everyone in the Watchtower Society and who is a Jehovah Witness so-called unless they come to full repentance and stop putting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on par with a mere angel. That is blasphemy. And that will ban a person, access denial from God's kingdom. I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you. Share it with your Jehovah Witness friends. They'll have no rebuttal. May you go in peace in Jesus' name.